You ever seen that guy? You know which one I'm talking about. The one wearing the dress shirt that just makes him look bad. The fit is off. The pattern, the fabric, it's just wrong for him. The style is dated. Gentlemen, I don't want you to go out there, spend your hard earned money on dress shirts that don't make you look good. In today's video, I'm going to give you three guidelines that you can use to buy the perfect dress shirt for you. There are only three steps to buying the perfect dress shirt for you. They're pretty simple. Fit, fabric, function. And that's where it gets a little bit tricky because although that is simple, that's my style pyramid. I've talked about it before. Still, so many men mess it up. So, in today's video, I'm going to go into a lot more detail with each of these so you can follow along and you go out there and you buy a dress shirt that just makes you look great, makes you look like a million bucks and enables you to do what you need to get done. First up, gentlemen, let's talk about fit. Fit is king. I can't stress that enough. Fit is king. Of all the three things I'm going to talk about, if you don't get the fit right, nothing else matters because you can go out there and spend good money on a shirt, but if it's too tight in the neck area, if it's spreading right here in the chest area, if it doesn't fit you in the shoulders, it's a waste of money. It's the, it's just not something that you can compromise on. So, make sure even if it's an inexpensive shirt that you got at Goodwill and get it, make sure it fits you properly. It doesn't matter that it costs just a few bucks or if it costs $500. If it doesn't fit you, it's not a shirt that you want to keep or even have in your closet. Now, when you're wearing a shirt that fits you, like this shirt for me right here, what I look at, shoulder points. The shoulder points, they need to come right at your shoulder points. If they go way too low or they come up here towards your neck, it's wrong. It's the fit, just you can't go with that shirt. If you put your hands down, put them out right there and the sleeves are too short, then it's a bad fit. If they're too long, you can get that maybe adjusted a bit, but if they're too short, skip it. If again, you have the buttons basically opening up right here in the chest area, well, congratulations, you're lifting weights, probably looking good there, but that's too tight in you in the torso, you can't go with that shirt. Shirts can be brought down a bit, but they don't have excess material to be let out. So, you want to make sure you find that shirt that fits you properly. Now, one of the key things that you need to know are your own measurements. I do think if a man knows his measurements, which is going to be, you know, various, you know, shoulders, I'll list them down in the description, but you want to have your shoulders, your sleeve length and you know chest torso all of that if you know that that's going to help you a lot find shirts that fit you in addition maybe go out there measure your best fitting shirts but when you know this information you can more accurately zero in on the shirts that are going to work for you because if you're just going by medium understand different brands put out different mediums and if you're hard to fit this is even more difficult now some of you guys are wondering okay antonio i can never find a shirt to fit me well guess what Today's video is sponsored by Taylor Store. I have been working with them for a year and I love their shirts, guys. I used to own a custom clothing. You guys probably know I used to make custom suits, used to make shirts. I got out of that business because companies like Taylor Store, they're doing a better job than I was. These guys are awesome. Guys, what you're going to love about Taylor Store, especially if you're big, if you're small, if you are hard to fit, is that these shirts are made custom to your measurements. Perhaps my favorite part about Taylor Store is their perfect fit guarantee because the first time I got a shirt from them, I got it back and I was like, ah, it's just a little bit short in the sleeves. I maybe would have made the shirt just a tad longer for me. The fit of the shirt, I love my shirts just to being a little bit extra longer. I sent them those details. I said, can you make these adjustments? They said, sure, no problem because this is a service we provide. If you have an issue with the fit, it's not what you expect. Simply ask them to make those adjustments and they will remake the shirt for you. In the description of this video, you're going to find a discount code. 40 percent off gentlemen that it's an amazing discount they're doing this because they want you to try them out i wear these shirts i was at my own conference i'm wearing their shirts uh this one right here is made from linen it's beautiful dark blue i also have this one uh, you can probably if you click on the link you can see the photos in which i'm wearing uh, some of these shirts so the fabric selection everything in taylor store i can't stress it enough a great company I'm going to link to them down in the description. Take advantage of that discount code. It's not going to be around forever. And guys, let's get back to fabric. Point number two, gentlemen, let's now talk about fabric. So, with fabric, when you look at this right here, white classic dress shirt, this dark blue that I'm wearing right here made from a linen and I'll get into the fabric types and the weaves and stuff here in a second. But right now, notice this is a dress shirt. This is not technically a dress shirt. This is going to be more casual. So, the lighter colors, 
white, light blues, some of the ones of the pastels as well, those can be considered dress shirts. Dress shirts in general are going to be very simple. This right here is a classic white dress shirt. Now, when you're looking at a dress shirt and you're looking at the fabric, again, you want to go with solids when you're building your base. And I do think that blues and whites and variations of such are where you want to build the base of your first 10 shirts. The key point here is stick with your solids, stick with your bases. Don't try to bring in a lot of fabrics with complex patterns. You can start to do that once you've got eight shirts, 10 shirts, 15 shirts. The reason is complex patterns, larger patterns, are harder to match. They're going to be more memorable and you they're not going to be as interchangeable. Now, I have nothing against checks and I think checks are great, especially smaller patterns. Smaller patterns can be worn and I think fit into an interchangeable wardrobe. But once you start going, you know, small patterns like this one right here, I could get away probably with wearing this maybe twice in a week if let's say I was on a travel conference. But a fabric like this or a paisley or a, you know, a large dot or a very thick stripe. This is very memorable. And although I love this shirt, this is something that I could only wear once at an event, maybe once a month to work because people will remember it. They'll notice it. It's memorable. Also, when you see something with louder colors, when you see those dark reds, when you see those dark green shirts, uh, understand those are casual shirts. Now, let's talk about fiber type. So, you're going to see cotton. Cotton is the most common shirt fabric out there and for good reason. It's durable. It can take a number of dyes. It is something that is proven. It can be ironed. It can be shaped. So, when you see Egyptian cotton, when you see Sea Island cotton, what you're actually paying for is one that's got a little bit longer strand when it was grown and that's great because it means it's going to be able to create a tighter weave, more durable fabric. When you see 100% cotton, that's usually a very good thing. Now, this shirt right here I talked about it is made from linen. I love linen, especially if it's of a higher quality because it's usually going to be more breathable. It's great for the summer. It also has a little bit of a rougher texture. This one right here has been woven in with a black and a dark blue. So, it gives this navy type of look, but when you get up close, you can start to see the texture and I like that in my fabrics. When you see something out there that is using a synthetic, I'm not going to say it's bad because synthetics have come a long way in the last decade to two decades. If you see something that's a blend, understand that the only, you know, that what they're doing there is they're trying to mix things together to be able to get some great properties to it. So, you, see, you will see sometimes where they take a cotton and they mix it in with a synthetic fabric. Uh, what they're looking for is oftentimes a little bit of stretch uh, to have it so that it's going to basically stand up and maybe maintain its color, maintain its shape. That's when you start to see non irons as well. Be careful though with silk. Silk is a luxury fabric. I don't like silk in shirts. What I would rather you go for is a tighter, Higher, higher weave, maybe like a luxury cotton that looks like silk. It's going to have the durability of cotton. Uh, silk, you have to send off to the dry cleaners unless you've got a lot of money for that or you really just want silk. I guess you could go for it, but I, I really don't like silk shirts. Now, the different ways that fabric is woven together is going to affect the properties and basically a lot of the look of the fabric. So, I'm going to give you three of the most common. First off, let's talk about the plain weave. This is where we're going to see broadcloth. This is where we're going to see poplin. So, most white dress shirts are going to be using a plain weave. Why? Because you're using one color of fabric and it gives it its nice, very simple, uh, you know, I look at this, it's got a nice sheen to it. It's got a very nice drape. Now, if we were to go over and we look at twills, it actually creates a little bit of a tighter weave. It starts to create patterns in the fabric. Hence, we see that in twill fabrics. We see herringbone patterns and other patterns like that in twill fabrics. Also, twill fabrics are very durable. Next up, let's talk about basket weaves. So, basket weaves are very similar to plain weaves. Instead of though one yarn that's going in and out, one piece of thread that's going in and out, what we see are multiple threads that are being basically wrapped together and oftentimes of different colors. This is why we see with Oxford fabrics, we see from a distance, from like two feet, it looks like a solid fabric. When we get up close, we start to see a white in there. We see various patterns and white mixed with a blue is oftentimes where we see this type of weave. Next up, let's talk about the function of the dress shirt. Do we want it to be casual? Do we want it to be formal? And therein lies the style of the dress shirt. The most important style aspect to me is the collar. Why? because the collar frames the face. It is something that even if you're wearing a jacket over that shirt, they're still going to see the collar. But if you've got a really thin face or you've got a really round face, you want to be careful because it's these extremes that the wrong collar type 
can just make your wide face look wider or your thin face look thinner. So, what you want to do is bring balance. Now, you also want to pay attention to the style. So, let me talk about each of the collar types. I'm not going to get into all of them, which if you want more of the support article, I'll link to down in the description, goes into all types of collar types. But, let's start off with the point collar. One of the most common shirt collars out there and the reason being is it works with neckties. Now, what you're going to see with a point collar is the angle is oftentimes going to be much less than 90 degrees and this works fine when you're wearing a necktie underneath. The issue with the point collar is if you've got a long face, you want to be careful of one that the points are going down too low. So, be careful of you know a point collar that goes down to 60 or 50 degrees. Now, spread collars, they go beyond the 90, we're talking 110, 140 degrees. So, with that, I like those if you're going to be wearing this casually. Now, be careful if you've got a round face. Wide collars can make you look bad, but if you've got a, you really like a big, large necktie knot, wider collars could work for you. Or in my case, I don't really wear neckties much anymore. So, it's something that I like the wide angle collar because it stays out of the way. Now, other types of collars, there are specific types. There are button down collars. This comes out of the polo fields. Started off with casual shirts. You will see this on some shirts, but this is always going to be casual. You've also got hidden button downs. You've got pin collars, tab collars. Understand that those are all going to be more casual. At the end of the day, most of the shirts in your wardrobe should either be point collars if you wear a lot of neckties or it could be spread collars because if you don't, you want them out of the way. Now, one last thing about collars and this is what I look for in a high quality shirt with collars is it's going to have basically collar stays. Collar stays, like it sounds, they maintain the bones, the structure of the collar. So, it gives you a nice point. Some companies are going to sew it in and I get it because they realize most men don't want to deal with this. But if you're interested in this, I think it's a great thing to have removable collar stays. In this case, Taylor Store sends extras with all the shirts they send out and this fits perfectly right in there. I like plastic stays because if you accidentally wash the shirt with the stays, not going to do any damage to the shirt. If you go metal, uh, be careful. All always remove them because it can actually damage the shirt. Next up, let's talk about shirt cuffs. So, like the shirt collar, the shirt cuffs are something that people will see even if you wear a jacket over it. So, I think it's pretty important to nail these to make sure that they're of good quality, that they look good, that they're well pressed whenever you wear them. Now, the particular styles, there are three common styles out there. The most common one by far is the single button cuff like what I'm wearing right here. Um, what you'll see on a lot of these, especially ones off the rack, is they're going to have two buttons. What that means is that basically, you could cut one off and you can go with the one that fits you well or you can keep both there because if you happen to wear a watch, it can actually expand it out and therefore it's going to work for you. Now, after this, you will also see French cuffs and those are going to be on more formal shirts or on custom made shirts and a French cuff is going to be where it's got a longer cuff that folds over on itself and it has no buttons and it use, has to use a piece of jewelry known as a cufflink to hold the cuff together. I do like these and I think that they're fine for more formal events or for a man who just simply wants to add a bit of style and wants to get away from the normal cuffs out there. Now, this cuff right here is a two button cuff. This is pretty rare, but I think it's more common in the custom world. I like this because it's a small indicator. This is a custom shirt without being, you know, overly pretentious. So, a few other style details that you want to pay attention to, pockets. I don't like my dress shirts with pockets. I think pockets are more casual and so, if you've got a shirt with two pockets right here on the front and they've got basically flaps on them, understand it's a very casual look. It's not wrong, it is just a casual look not belonging on a dress shirt. Epaulets, these are left over from military history. I think they can look good and build up the shoulders but again, they're going to be casual and they're going to be something you won't want to see on a really nice dress shirt. Now, this right here is known as the placket. There are three common types of plackets out there. We're going to see this type of placket where it's just a folded over. We're going to see a plain no non-existing placket in which it's just simply the fabric that goes over other times, we're going to see a covered placket. A covered placket is where you wouldn't even see the buttons right here because they would actually be covered by another piece of fabric. All right, gentlemen, that is it. I know that was a lot of information in today's video. If you want more, go check out the support article. I'll go into a lot more detail there. I'll have pictures, illustrations about a lot of the stuff I talked about. I will go into certain topics that I wasn't able to cover in today's video because I just wanted to keep this a little bit more condensed. And don't forget, 
go check out Taylor's store. I've got a discount for you down in the description, 40% for first time customers. Guys, this company is amazing. I've been with them for a year. I've got a number of their shirts. These shirts are just amazing quality. It's a great deal. I just think it makes dressing sharp easier. And when you dress sharp, you basically are able to send the message you want to send. Gentlemen, take care. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.